Hey guys, I want to talk with you about something fascinating called the Dunning-Kruger effect and how reflecting and understanding the Dunning-Kruger effect and reflecting it onto ourselves can, can kind of show us a lot about one of the problems we're going to face going forward as a species unless we start finding some acknowledgement of what are our own failings. Dunning-Kruger effect started when a man did two armed robberies and looked directly at the CCTV cameras and smiled. <laughs> Subsequently, this man was caught, <laughs> naturally. So, he was studied by Dunning-Kruger to understand what had happened. And this man had put lemon juice on his face and believed because it had similar properties to invisible ink, it had rendered him invisible to the CCTV. And he was very shocked that it had not. <laughs> <clears throat> now, excuse me, what this shows us is when we have a lack of knowledge as human beings, as a species, we can have hyper-confidence, and I am guilty of this too. Now imagine, as a way to explain this, the whole of the screen here is all of the knowledge you need on a topic to be a world expert. However, I might be aware of, I think, the collective topic is that size and I have this much knowledge and thus I feel I'm borderline expert because I have no awareness due to my lack of knowledge of all of this information on the rest of the screen. When you grow and you get to this point where you think wow I'm at the point of expertise and you all of a sudden realize this whole screen exists, something begins to happen. When you think the topic is that big and you have that much knowledge, your confidence is, is here. It, it's up high. I just put my finger like that and I know some people are going to say, it's a 666 sign. It wasn't intentional, <laughs> okay? And thus I feel I am borderline expert. And when that happens, your confidence is up here. Now, as you grow in your knowledge and you realize you're here and you're not an expert and the whole screen exists and you know nothing about it, your confidence comes down and eventually you have to start studying, learning more and it begins to go back up where you get to this level. What I am seeing at the moment is that many persons online in the spiritual community which I am part of deeply, somehow the expression of spirituality firstly has turned into commentating on the things we don't want to see, commentating on the negative. And it's become deeply about conspiracy. Now, that's okay for some if that's what you want to do, but I would say that you can't counter that unless you bring the opposite of what you want to see, because when you bring the opposite, you're learning how to embody that opposite side of it. When you are commentating with anger and outrage, we have a massive outrage culture at the moment, everyone gets outraged about everything, then you're basically observing persons who were organized and, and creating things on the planet and you're outraged at it and you're saying this is not how to do it but you're not setting, ex setting an example of how to do it. And thus many of us are stuck here at the moment and there are many crazy conspiracies come out because of people having that much awareness of a topic. Their confidence is up here. And I too have done this in my life plenty of time. But why is it key that we have some growth on this? Why is it key we plot where we are on this Dunning-Kruger graph? Well, I see it regularly where persons say this buzz term, they want to do this to you. They want to do this to the planet. They want to do this. But they never say who they are. Or they reference they as the cabal. Or they reference they as the Illuminati. They reference they are as the deep state. But nobody ever makes an attempt to distinguish who they are. And I say that's because they're at this part. I theorize because many of those persons are at this part of Dunning-Kruger. And unfortunately with the online communities as well, there are many reasons not to lose your confidence and grow into a state of expertise, such as the seductiveness of uh, earning and the seductiveness of, of hitting the algorithm, where do you find time to do it? And I was guilty of that too. YouTube is a tool for me, but I got so immersed at one point where I was trying to 
thinking, oh, I'll try and, I've had my silver play button, let me try and get my gold play button, this will be great. And if that's your path, I'm not judging it, if that's what you want to do. But for me, it was a tool. YouTube was a tool for me to build change in the world for those that I love and those that I am yet to meet that I also have love for. What I'm seeing at the moment is there is such a drastic lack of knowledge that that lack of knowledge is creating a lack of love and it's also creating a lack of direction because if we stay in this part of that graph we don't know because we need to be up here how to build the change that we're crying out for many people are saying we need a different system we need a new way but they don't know what it looks like and they don't know where to begin to build that and it's important that we get to here and start looking at how we're going to do that. I witnessed recently in the news in America, there were two law students who wrecked their whole lives by petrol bombing a car in the Black Lives Matter protests. The Black Lives Matter protests have descended into a lot of uh, rioting and chaos and looting, etc. I'm not saying that's the core of Black Lives Matter, but what is important from that is many of these youth are here. They really are. They don't have enough knowledge. They want a new system, but if you sit down and say, what do you want? What's, what sort of system do you want? And how do we do that? How do we get together and build that? They're actually asking others to do it for them. They're actually saying other oh, people should do it for them, but just not in the way that they are. And this is a very, very vulnerable position for the whole of humanity. That's just one example I'm giving. Many of us are in that vulnerable position. We do not want this anymore, but we don't understand how to build a new one. We are not forming conglomerates. We're not forming union. We are just rapidly sharing opinion on whatever trends through the algorithm of social media and mainstream media. We are rapid rate opinionating ourselves constantly and many with an outrage culture. And I wouldn't mind if that was something persons were doing if behind the scenes they were taking some time to say, hey, we don't want to see this. Let's get these communities together. Let's get these people together. Let's try and bring together the groups that we're in, etc. But it doesn't. Even people who try to open groups on the topics of Facebook, etc., it just becomes often about sharing information and virtue signaling and getting to the point where it's like, okay, now what? What are you actually going to do to change the system? Because this isn't doing it. You're not changing it by, by writing online. You're not changing it by being angry. We're not changing it by rioting. What do we need to do? And I think the reason for that is most of us are brought up in a terrible education system. We have minimal awareness. We have information fed to us by multinational corporations and their search engines. and and we all end up with a similar field depending which avenue we go down and we get to this state where we are underserved with our knowledge and thus we have to be aware as well in this age that you can publish without credential and thus some people who seem so confident in what they're publishing are at this point because they have that much on a topic and the whole of the topic is missing from it and at the end of the day what do we want well we want municipalities that look after our children and our families. We want these things there. And thus, we can't say the whole system requires anarchy because you need those things for the love and protection of everybody you know. But what we do need is to start looking at why government can tell you what to do instead of just being there to look after your municipalities. This is a step in the right direction with our thought process and, and the way that we educate ourselves about the changes we want to bring. But if we remain in this state as we are now, the working classes, I think one key thing I would say is let's plot ourselves on that graph and be very honest about where we are. I'm somewhere here, I've lost confidence, I'm starting to come back up again on many, many topics, but I'm there with purpose, I'm there for growth. And where is everybody else on that? And will we ever see the change that we really desire unless we all start climbing up and getting into that state at the other end of the Dunning-Kruger effect where we actually have a genuine expertise instead of a, 
minimal knowledge that makes us feel like an expert and also have a lack of control of emotion etc and that makes us very vocal and adds to the vast confusion that we are facing on the planet at the moment and I'll just revert back to those two law students two well-educated men petrol bomb a car and ruin their life why because they allowed emotion to overtake them because they allowed the flesh and not the spirit to guide their decision making and why did they do that because they're law students because even with a good education from within inside the system they didn't know how to get the change that they wanted because they didn't have enough knowledge but they could have taken the patient long path and bolstered and gained the knowledge that they need to start making the changes and start making the impact on society they want to but my theory is that the majority of millennials are so programmed into instant gratification we need to feel like we're changing it now today now today and I could come online and I could soothe say all of you and say it's time for change they are going to try and do this they are trying to do this they are this it's very serious at this point you've got to but then all that does is rile more and more people up into this state of knowing that something has to give way but never a solution forming and I myself I want to build solutions and I believe one of the key solutions to the problems on the planet is sharing because it brings about an element of equality and I think one of the key factors that we have that is problematic at present as I've said recently is we are not detoxing the instant gratification programming that our bodies have gone through to be good consumers and thus because we have not done that because we haven't detoxed the instant gratification programming from us even those with education who want to see a change and have enough passion to get out on the streets and protest and want change are so disconnected from understanding how they can do it and so disempowered with it that they choose to wreck their lives by petrol bombing a car when realistically they were probably at a better footing than the majority of people in the cause they have chosen to get behind to actually bring a change but they've been sold inside their brain this instant 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 concept of life and life will not bring you an instant change it will not happen you have to work towards the goals that you want to see on the planet it won't happen especially if everybody is stuck on this side of the groove because even if everybody on that side of the groove got their own way and every elitist and person in power let go and went right okay do it you can you, you can all do it they wouldn't know what to do a government would need to be formed immediately people wouldn't know how to do this people wouldn't know what on earth they would they wouldn't have a system designed that there'd be no way that it could possibly work and yet that's what many are screaming at oh we don't want you in charge we can do better and as i've said as well recently on that topic we think we can do better but when the majority of working class men are addicted to pornography naked women on a screen why do we think to give men as an example why do they think they can run it better when at that level the temptations will be far greater when temptations are menial like that and, and, and minor and you still can't conquer them why do we think that at the top level we would be able to conquer them and that's one key expression to show you one very key expression to show that it starts at home and I think a great, great little exercise is plot yourself on Dunning-Kruger, truthfully. Ask where you are on various topics. Ask where you are in your state of being. And as I say, for me, we want change, yes. But next time you're listening to a person telling you, we need change, they want to do this to you, they want to do that, just stop and say, have they ever told me who they are? And have they ever told me what this change should look like? And if not, is there a more mature depth to this? Is there a more mature depth than just being emotive and saying this doesn't work? Or are there people out there who need to really come down and start looking and saying, how do we alter this system? How do we build new systems? Because when you actually take responsibility for things in the world, you start seeing that it takes time, it takes effort, and it takes a great deal of love with it. Because perfect love will cast out hate, and only perfect love. God bless, guys.
Bye. Try and remember now just what has been done. Enslavement, displacement of every nation, and now to one nation. Everyone, oh, their grudge kind of make me wonder where we Defend the white and I don't defend the black I defend truth and rights and all of that Work on situation, where I'm at Hold my position, never fall off track Now give up, not babe